We can't hear you on your microphone. I'm just switching my mic. I said, didn't I, Claire, earlier? I might forget. Is that better now? Yeah, okay. So, we're going to take a lead to the side. If you can take your feet wide and reach. And over the other way. Reaching your fingers. Try and think of your fingers extending towards the side wall. Let your head drop to open the muscles around the side of the neck. Inhaling through your nose. Exhaling through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. One more each way. Hands on the hips, we're going to circle the hip round, pushing your bottom out to the back and then pushing your hips to the front. And reversing, back the other way. going to stand on the one leg and circle through the wrists and through the foot. And you make the circle quite big, keeping the limb steady and reversing. You lengthen your posture, so you elongate up through the crown of your head, spreading your toes, fingers and then closing them. And let's relax down. Give that a go on the other side. Again, elongating your posture. Noticing how much play is there in that supporting leg. Let's reverse. Opening and closing the fingers and the toes. I'm going to take our feet a little bit wider. Out this way. So nice and wide with your feet. Turning the toes out, bending the knee, and push your bottom back. Let's do that the other side, pushing back. 
breathe. It's up to you how far down you come. If you want to nudge on a bit and go a bit lower, find what feels doable for you. Breathe. Slide the hand down the lengthened leg. Breathe. Inhale as you lift. Exhale as you lower. One more each way. And final one. I want you to come down onto your back. Getting in the way, you know, why it's not worked so far. And um, sometimes the, the, the hardest bit is actually just picking up the phone and um, talking it through. So brave pants on. I work with all sorts of people from various walks of life, different shapes and sizes. And often people um, who do work with me do it because they say that I do it in a very non-judgmental way. Of course, it's free to talk. Uh, so you can click the link in the description box below and we can uh, get to know each other and see if we're a good fit. There's no pressure here. On the call, I'll listen in to, you know, what you need support with, what your personal needs are, and I can answer any of your questions about our online um, Pilates and yoga where we do it together in community. Why wait? This stuff doesn't get any easier as we get older. We work with lots of busy parents, um, grandparents, uh, business owners, NHS professionals, private school teachers, regular school teachers. Um, so if that feels like you and you need that support and accountability on getting it done, that's the thing. If we've got the sessions booked in regularly, that means we're much more likely to show up. And it's that regularity that people are often missing. You know, they take time off during holidays. Um, it, it's the commitment that gets the motivation. So why wait? Um, book in, give me a call and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Breathe in and breathe out are you looking for online classes that support you with getting more me time you want to get supple strong feel less stressed get in the driving seat but actually perhaps you've noticed that following videos on uh youtube isn't actually helping you commit uh, it's not like the teacher reaches out and says um correct your hips, bring your knee back, move your posture back. And this is the problem. So um, of course you can hit subscribe to get more from the Zig's YouTube channel, but let's face it, we're not gonna send our children to a school without a teacher or a tutor. I mean, what's their life gonna be like if um, they're gonna learn in that way? So uh, my name's Claire Louise Freeman. I'm the business owner of Zig's Exercise. And I like to encourage you to, to join me and my community online where we get together via Zoom and we practice Pilates conditioning, yoga stretches, mobility. And the thing is we get to actually talk through this stuff. We get to do it together. And to me, consistently doing it together is the thing that gives us much, much better results than if we're left flailing around in front of a video trying to do it all by ourselves. So if you'd like more information about joining me and others, please reach out, get in touch. Um, you can work with us morning, evening, from the comfort of your own home. It's great because you get all the kit together at home and it does help you to practice in between as well. So um, I'm offering a complimentary kickstart call. Uh, we can talk through what's getting... Adjust the angle. And you can join me down here on the mat. So I'd like you to pull your knees up your arms out wide to the side, rolling your knees down and pressing your shoulders towards the ground. Let's lift the knees up, over and down to the other side, pressing your shoulders into the ground. Let's do that again. 
free. Tucking your knees as you press them down. Take a deep breath into the side of your body. Exhaling and lifting. Do it again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Pressing your shoulders down as you do it. One more on each side. And then from here, we're going to alternate bringing the knees in. So we'll bring one knee in and then switch for the other. So you're just going to give each knee a little hug. You may not have had a hug yet today. I don't think I've hugged my knees yet today. I certainly hugged my kids. I've got a very barking Zach in the house at the moment, bless him. They both had that long cough that's been going around. So hugging the knees. One more on each side. Alrighty, and then from here we're going to place our feet flat, palms facing up. Can you give me a pelvic floor squeeze and then release? And do it again. Squeeze your pelvic floor muscles and let them release. Do it again. This time hold them in and curl up into shoulder bridge. Pausing at the top and then imprinting down bone by bone. Relax your pelvic floor at the bottom. Re-squeeze your pelvic floor and tilt your pelvis as you lift. And you keep hold of the pelvic floor at the top and print down bone by bone. Breathing in at the bottom, re-squeezing and lifting. Now you can either keep going with the basic bridge or if you want to notch up, we'll add a leg raise switch to the other side, aiming to keep our hip bones level and then rolling the body back down. For those of you doing level two, we have that knee hover or level three, we have the reach with a straight leg. Now the aim really is to keep the hips level, rolling the body down. Let's do it again. Breathe. We do that twice more through. The so final one. Alrighty, from here we're going to bring our right knee in, tuck it to the chest as we extend our left leg down. And then if you use your opposite hand to pull the leg across, Placing toes on the floor and trailing this back arm. Turn your head to look over towards your opposite shoulder. And can you look behind your shoulder? So your eye muscles are pulling a bit as you gaze behind you. And we've got those little muscles attached to the back of the eye. We definitely want those strengthening and stretching and moving well. Breathe. Pressing your knee down and your shoulders simultaneously. And let's release. We're going to give that a go on the other side. So hugging the knee up. Bringing the leg across, trailing the hand so the hand sits just above your shoulder line. Pressing down with the shoulder. Again, turning the eyes so you feel a bit of pull at the back of the eye muscle to gaze behind the shoulder. Just reminding ourselves of those smaller muscles. Actually in the evening tribe I taught before this session, it was a bit more male heavy and we ended up chatting about snoring and uh, looking at some exercises for around the, the tongue and the, the throat that actually help with things like sleep apnea and snoring. So many ladies are being kept awake. Let me know and I'll you the, the share. So 
physio exercises. All right, let's roll to the centre and let's do some calf mobilisations requested by Jane C. So we're going to lift up the tailbone into our downward dog, press down through the heels. We're just going to drop into one side as we flex the toes on the other like this and then switch and do that on the other side. Keep lifted in your tailbone as you press your heel down, two, three, and then switch. Press down, two, three, and then switch. And if your calves feel particularly tight, maybe doubling up a couple of sets a day, just to really dig into those. Breathe. Let's do a couple more. Breathe. Just think what your calves are saying to you as you do that stretch. I'm feeling quite grateful right now for a bit of a, a stretch. So we're going to take a, a lower down with our body. So if you can join me down onto your front now. And let's tune into some cobras, particularly if you've been doing a lot of desk work today. Your backs can get stuck in that sort of forward lean position. So some cobras are great for just counteracting that leaning forward, sitting at a desk pose. Chin up, eye gaze up, and then lowering. As you lift, can you squeeze your buttock muscles and point your toes quite firmly so you feel tension in the legs and then soften and let that tension go. Breathing in, squeezing the pelvic floor, the buttocks, pointing the toes on the lift. Softening and letting go on the way down. Inhaling and lifting. Exhaling and lowering. Your back's feeling happy and strong. You might go a little bit higher up and move your hands further back. Move up twice more. So final one. And let's release. Okay, so from here we're going to move into forearm plank like this. So if you can pop your forearms like that and squeeze and make a fist, just lifting from your waist, tucking your tailbone slightly. And notice I've hovered a single leg like this just for about three seconds. And then we're going to switch sides without moving the hip too much. So see if you can keep your hips central as you swap the leg. If it feels easy, nudge it up to your toes. You may be doing enough as you are. You're intensive on the toes with the knees off the ground. Again, just holding for three seconds keeping the chest open, the eye gaze forwards, breathe. We do two more. And last one. And then from here, we're gonna come up again into our downward dog both heels pressing down now lifting the tailbone softening the shoulders deep breath alrighty so from here we're going to go into wide leg pilates side lean so if you can open your feet now, if it's tricky to sit up straight when you're sat on the floor and you find your back rounds a bit or your pelvis tucks, then pop yourself on a little cushion, a block, a mat that's rolled up. Something, a jumper, something just to give you a bit of lift. A pillow is fine or a cushion. We're going to point the toes and where your knees are, try to roll the knees back a bit. So often when it's tight, the knees will do that and sort of roll in. So try to roll them back and push down underneath here where there tends to be a bit of a gap if it's tight. So we're going to point the toes and then on the lean, can we flex 
the feet, bring this arm over by the ear, let your head drop down, breathing in as you come up, pointing the toes, rolling the knees back, and then flexing, leaning, letting the head drop, inhale and lift, pointing the toes, exhaling and leaning, now over time, this second hand, you want to come down to towards that bottom hand. And if you're there and that's coming all the way over now and you've got this arm sort of back by the ear, you can start to scoop this bottom arm away and just pull with the top arm. So more advanced, choose your level. Stick with what feels slightly uncomfortable but doable. Going to do it four more times. Now, if you want to, you can reel your feet further back. You might be doing enough as you are. And last one each way. Exhaling on the lean. Inhaling on the lift. Okay, good job. So let's give our legs a bit of a, a shake out. Can you join me standing? Now's a good time to get some water. So have a little drink. And if you can, find some weights as well. slightly wider than our hips, just letting the weights hang loose at the side of the body. Before you go into your squat, I'd like you to lift your shoulders up, squeeze the blades and then press down, just lengthening your neck posture. So let's do that again, coming up, squeeze and press down. Let's do that one more time, coming up, squeeze press down and we're going to keep our shoulders down in that position as we fold the weight towards the shoulder two three and then release as you lower and you squeeze your belly button muscle in two three and release so for our first level squeezing in from the core pressing down through the shoulders now if we can keep the blades in that type of posture you want to add some reach for second level and concentrate on your posture in your shoulders as you add that forward reach. The more advanced, we add some reach over the head. As long as we've got happy neck, happy shoulders. Go and sit into it. So get your bottom down, bum almost level with your knees working on that before the overhead because the overhead's just going to make it tougher can we do two more i think we can let's give it a go and final one okay good job resting off can you find a stick and we're going to use our stick to monitor our posture as we go into our quad stretches so if you can pop your stick just here behind your back your head your shoulders your tailbone is attached and then catching hold of your foot bringing your knees together elongating up through the crown of your head heel towards your bottom noticing how well is that supporting leg foot against the floor relaxing underneath the foot and let's switch and give that a go on the other side the knees together Heel towards the bottom. Again, underneath the foot. Does that feel 
feel relaxed? Is there any sort of clawing going on under the foot? We soften the muscles underneath the foot. Breathe. Okay, let's switch the hand behind. I'm going to bring up the opposite foot, keeping the stick behind. Now, if you feel a bit unsteady, what you can do is just bring the stick down at your side, or you can use your stick to monitor posture if you want to focus on that. So it's up to you. And we're going to try and add some lift in that leg behind, pointing the toes, aiming for a sort of horizontal position over time. And then let's give that a go the other way. Good for our stability muscles, our balance muscles, which help to keep us upright. Lengthening out through that back leg, can you point your toes? And take the other arm out to the side. Hold, breathe. And let's give that a go. Now, as you lift the leg, can you keep your tailbone and your head against the stick? And noticing the foot that you stood on. Have you got somebody where in the heel as well as the ball of your foot? What's the distribution of body weight like in that foot? Does it feel nicely balanced or is there a lot of clawing going on under there? What's it like on the other side? Now for me on one side, particularly after I'd had back injury years ago. We found that <clears throat> there was a lot of flooring going on under the, the foot on the injured side. I had to kind of really work on the rehab of that. Okay, let's use the stick to mobilize our shoulders now. So tapping down behind, tapping down in the front. Adding some rise to tiptoe and then drop up and drop, breathe in, breathe out. Taking the feet a little bit wider and we're gonna park the stick just above the crown of the head, soften the knees so there's a bit of bounce in them and let your tailbone just really kind of hang loose. Leaning to the side, squeezing the pelvic floor and the belly button and then moving to the center. Let's do that again. Lean to the side, squeezing the pelvic floor and release it. Pull against the stick as if you're trying to pull the stick apart as you lean and then release and soften. Do it again, lean. Now notice, is your body leaning slightly forward? If you were doing this with your back against a wall, would your tailbone and your head be sliding against the wall? Breathe. Let me go a bit further. Next level, coming down into plie and then lifting up. So you can stay with that verse version if you prefer. And last couple. Final one. Okay, good job. Popping the stick just behind. On this side, we're going to turn the toes out a little bit. So the foot's parallel with the edges of the mat. And then over here, we're going to angle in at 45 degrees. And we're going to slide the hand into triangle pose. Rolling the top shoulder back. We keep the stick against the head and the tailbone. Deep breath. And I'm going to soften this knee and release, switching the hands, turning the feet. So we do the same with the feet, but the other way. Sliding into triangle pose. Rolling the top shoulder back, turning the head. Breathe. A 
And let's soften the knee and release and shake a leg. Okay, high five. Have a drink and let's pop down onto our backs for some more core Pilates training. So fingertips in the curve of the back now. If you could draw your belly button muscle in so you've got a little bit of pressure on your hands. And I'd like you to extend your leg, tap and move in. Level one, extend, tap, move in. Level two, knees starting here above your hip joint. Third level, straight legs. Flexing our feet. And then can we do pointy toes? Breathe out, breathe in. I'd like you to do it four more times. And final one. And then from there, if you can bring your knees towards your chest and then circle the knees open and round. Let your knees sort of fall apart and come back together. Close your eyes for a moment as you get into massaging your lower back against the ground as you do it. Reverse the knees back in the opposite direction. Breathe. Use this time as your sacred breathing space. So from here, we're going to roll over and I'd like you to move into all fours. If being on all fours troubles your knees, you can always add um, a little bit of padding, extra padding under your knees. You can do these up against a wall as well. So we're going to let the chest lower towards the ground. Breathe out as we lower. Breathe in as we lift. So with level one, we keep the knees in. With level two, we move the knees a little further back. Or more advanced, we move it up to toes. So choose your level one, two, or three. Exhaling as you drop, inhaling as you lift. Can we do two more? Opening the knees towards the edges of the mat, toes touch together, elbows down as we move into a groin stretch, pushing the bottom back towards the heels. Opening the chest so the head is up, notice, arching the back slightly. Breathe into your belly, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Let your belly fill with air. Let your be belly empty. Let's release. And we're going to move into a side line position. So we've got the elbow lined up under the shoulder. And we're going to drop the shoulder blade itself down. So if you think of pushing down through that joint, I'm going to lift the hip and then lower. So first level, just a second or two lift and then lower. For second level, we'll bring the feet further back. So the feet are now behind and the knees are sort of flush with the chest. A longer hold with an arm sweep by the ear and then back down. Breathe in. Exhale, reaching, inhale, lowering. More advanced, we do the straight leg version. So the top leg comes over and the foot flattens just to steady the balance. 
often the head will sort of creep forwards on the ease, try to align the head with the rest of the back. And we do one more, and then we'll give that a go on the other side. It can be quite tough on the shoulders, arm and side of the body. So let's give them a little bit of a roll out, and then we give that a go over on the other side. So try and line the elbow up directly under your shoulder, lock it down. So just a small lift and then lower for our first level. Second level, knees a little bit further back with that sweep of the arm. And then for those of you doing more advanced, we straighten the leg. Choose your level one, two or three. Breathe. Bring the head back. And as you come up, aim to stack the hips one above the other. Pressing that bottom shoulder down, sort of squeezing the bottom fist. And last couple. Breathe. Great for strength conditioning down the side and into the back of the body. From here, we're going to come up to standing again and I'd like you to find your stick. Now's a good time for a drink. And we've got some yoga based hamstring stretches coming up next. Is it hot in here or is it my hormones? It's quite mild today, isn't it? Okay, so I'd like you to use the edges of your mat to get your feet aligned with. So your feet are sort of parallel with the edges. If you feel a bit unsteady at all, you can bring your stick down at the side. Or I'm going to use it to monitor the posture so the head and the tailbone connected with the stick and then this hand is free to apply a little bit of pressure here on the mid thigh. And as you lean forward we're aiming for a sort of flat back type position, squaring the hips up. Notice what's going on on the hip of the back leg. Often that one will sort of have a little mind of its own and go on a little mission but if you can have a chat with it and just encourage it to nudge forwards, breathe, giving the hammies a good old stretch and then we're going to lose the head on the stick and soften that front knee as we just bring our nose down to say oh hello knee how are you today, nose meet knee, in a while and then if we bring the tailbone again back to the stick, head back and let's relax the knees and we're going to switch and do that on the other side. So again, just using the edges of your mat initially to line up the feet and then squaring up the hip bones as you lean and applying just a little bit of pressure on that front leg. tailbone and head in connection with the stick. Now again, if we just have a little chat with our hip, the back leg, can we just encourage it to nudge forwards a little bit? Breathe. And then allowing our head to come away from the stick and nose saying hello to the other knee. Hello knee, how are we doing? Deep breath. Giving our hamstrings a good old stretch as we bring our tailbone back to our stick and the head on the stick again. And just letting the knees soften and relax and giving our legs a shake. Now from here, we're going to walk our hands like this towards each other. 
if you grip and pull, like you're trying to pull the stick apart, you need to get that top elbow up to the ceiling and then turning your head to look over your shoulder. I'm going to do that thing with the eyes again where we glance down and aim for a bit of a pull in the muscles the back of the eyes. And you sort of gaze down behind the shoulder, deep breath. And then release and switch the hands, walking the hands towards each other. Gripping and pulling, turning, looking down. So get that pull around the eye muscles again as you gaze down behind the shoulder. Breathe. And let's release. Of stretch around our neck and jaw. So we're going to place one hand like this. If you can mirror me, if you pop your left hand here, and we're going to turn the head. And then here we're going to apply just a bit of pressure, like you're pushing your jaw into your hand, just for a couple of seconds. And then turning, looking behind. And then for a couple of seconds, pushing against the jaw. Two, three. And then turn, look behind. Press one, two turn one two press one two turn one two and last one okay good job let's bring this hand so we're going to turn one two and then press the jaw into the hand and then look behind we go further and then press into the jaw Turn the head so you go further looking behind and then press into the jaw and do it again. Breathe. And last one, press and then turn and release, allowing your head to drop to the side. You can apply a little bit of pressure just by your ear. Deep breath. Let's release and over to the other side. Gentle pull, deep breath. Alrighty, let's release. You can join me seated next. So coming down to your mat. If it's a bit tricky to sit yourself up from a lying down position, you might want to grab a strap, a band. So for level one, you'd hook it under your feet and then curl down. Level two, we'll do it like this, hands free. So if you need a strap, hook a stretchy band under your feet to lever your body down and then come back up. For level two, keeping the feet to the floor, inhaling, lifting, exhaling, coming down. If it's a smooth, steady move, over time you can start to add more lift up with the arms. But if it's already a bit jerky, I recommend keeping to a level and working on that quality of the movement. Inhaling as you lower, exhaling on the lift. Working towards using Move the control. I'm going to do that twice more. So last one. And you interlace your fingers and then turn your palms out away from the crown of your head, straightening your arms. Now we're going to straighten the legs and pull the toes. Arching back. Breathing deeply, closing your eyes, Just feel the breath inside of your belly, filling, emptying, feeling the breath, expanding, emptying. And then placing your arms like this, 
So in a kind of surrender pose, the back of the wrist is against the floor. I'd like to bend your legs and press your chin in. Almost a bit of a feeling like you're trying to create a double chin look. Tucking the chin in and pushing the back of the head, back of the hands into the ground. And then releasing. Let's do that again. Chin in, push down, two, three, and then release. As you do it, push your tongue up into the roof of your mouth. And then release. And again, so tongue up into the roof of your mouth. Breathe in. Breathe out as you release. And again. To do that twice more. Inhale as you press down. Exhale as you release. Final one. Alrighty, let's release and bring our arms down. So we're going to rest our hands on top of our belly. And with your eyes closed, just let your body relax. Allow the relaxation in. I'd like you to take a moment for a little bit of self-gratitude, appreciating the decision to be here today. Owning that decision and giving yourself a little bit of a pat on the back for being here. It's often a bit of a rush and there's a lot of resistance out there and stuff to work through. So just taking a moment to acknowledge that energy, that effort, that decision to show up and do something positive today. Your joints, your bones, your muscles, your mind, your body, and actually not just you, but all the people that you come into contact with throughout your day. Just taking a moment to Acknowledge that ripple effect of how your mini decision affects those around you. Allow your attention to drift a little bit. As you drift, I want you to notice how you're feeling. Let your mind rest on a little mini win of January. What's been just a little mini win this, this month? Just noticing what that little thing is. Having a little mini celebration with yourself. Because perhaps it would have been easy not to have that little mini win and not to notice. Just take a moment to notice. And take a moment to notice how that little mini win knocks on to others around you. And we're going to set the intention for our focused February coming up tomorrow, 31st today. use this last few minutes just to kind of mentally project set some intention for your focus over this next month you might create a little phrase or an affirmation or a, an I am the verb
I'd like you to take a deep breath in so that your hands kind of fill up with air. Just hold your breath for a moment. And then do a long exhale out. Do that again, filling up. Pausing your breath. Exhaling out. And again, let your belly fill. Pausing. Exhaling. Let's do that one more time. And when you're ready, I'd like you to bring some of the energy you're feeling into the room today. If you can open your eyes and we're going to roll over to our side. So I hope that's made a, a real difference to your day. If you can hit your unmute when you're ready. How are we feeling? 